this venom and vitriol that you speak of, we are seeing this coming towards uh, Trinidad and Tobago as a consequence of this. It does raise the question, however, and 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 and, and you articulated or echoed what my my my. Um, uh, disquiet is regard to the unchallenged statements being made in social media. Is that being responded to? Is there a voice of reason? I, I, I don't have to ask you about you being the voice of reason because, as I said, we've worked on projects before. But do you have other mm -hmm. like minds who are looking at the utterances, the dangerous utterances on social media and attempting to do something to dissuade folks from going into this protracted um, 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 battle uh, insularity? Mm -hmm. Well, well, I, 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 I take, I take, I take, I, I mentioned a point here I saw recently where even our prime minister um, echoed the words and the statements that our minister has made, which has brought the whole diplomacy and some type of, um, I want to say, you know, semblance of responsibility to the dialogue, um, because because our leaders too have to join the social media environment and provide us with the information of pertinence. Um, and, and when that starts happening, the hope is that we will rein in and bring back people back on the plantation. We have gone way off the plantation mm -hmm. on this one. But then let us also understand that there are also underlying matters which has, bred, which has given legs to what is taking place right now. Yes. Our leaders and our people need to sit mm -hmm. down at the table and realize that we need to look at some pressing issues that, will, that would cause for situations that we're now experiencing to spiral the way they are. Because I give you a case in point. Yes, we have our differences, and we'll always have our differences. But it is within our differences that we find unity and recognize that we rec we also have our, our what we have to work for in life. And it may not be the same situation. We must respect each other for what we're all about. So in the whole situation that has happened here, Rene, is that many others now have jumped on the bandwagon because they more than likely have been waiting for this type of opportunity. <laughs> you know, we, we, we live in a world today where negativity <laughs> sells. And this is not to say that, uh, and, and it also entraps good reasoning as well, because there, there are some positives to be come from all what is transpiring here. We just have to make sure that, that, the, the, that, that the, the, the reasonings uh, sensible reasonings are also part of the dialogue. The voice you're hearing on the other side is Owen G. Clay. He's the co-founder and managing director of the Queen's Base uh, Caribbean Immigrant Services. And I know thousands and thousands come through your door every day um, seeking for direction there. I am confused, however, um, at the same time, when I look at the call of the Jamaica, um, what are they, the Exporters Association calling for the boycott. On the other hand, the JMA, the Jamaica Manufacturers Association, say karma minds must prevail. However, yeah, yeah, how, however yeah. while they are doing that, they do something that uh, confuses me a bit because on the other hand, they, they, uh, they call the Trinidad and Tobago immigration stance on this matter divisive or divisive. And mm -hmm. I'm going like, well, you cannot say it is divisive or divisive on this hand, and on the other hand, call for karma heads to prevail. You're speaking from both sides of your mouth because you're sending two different messages. That, to me, coming from the JMA, such a powerful and important organization, um, particularly mm -hmm. because they deal with trade. They understand mm -hmm. what is going on here. The other part, and I'm going to let you respond to this in, in, in one mm -hmm. second, once I put the, 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 the attendant to that, they speak in terms of the government here subsidizing manufacturers because of the low cost of energy. If the cost of mm -hmm. energy is low because that's the way it prevails in the country and the country can produce a cheaper product, that does not mean you're doing direct subsidies. So, again, you're muddying the water with a whole lot of issues that are proving mm -hmm. to be very difficult for the average person to make sense of. Well, you see, and therein lies the whole situation of the underlying factors over all these years that have been left to fester. If you have an opportunity when the spotlight is on, you're going to throw the kitchen sink at it. We do that mm. here in America too, Rene. Mm -hmm. Once you get an opportunity at an outing to make your point or to, one say, you know, to, it's like you're in a, in a movie theater and you throw gasoline in there. You give the opportunity for a fire to blaze. That's what it's all about. And that is why our leaders must lead. Mm -hmm. Our leaders must lead. This is one situation where it is evident that there are cracks within our arrangements and our, uh, and our whatever bilateral or whether it's CARICOM. And this is where it's not a CARICOM failure. Mm -hmm. when these mm -hmm. things are not, because this is not just tri about Trinidad. It's about the whole of CARICOM. We mm -hmm. have challenges within our region. Mm -hmm. And I think it's now high time that our leaders sit down 
and realize what it is that we need to do to move this sector along. And those who have opportunities that can engender the process must step up to the plate. But then, as it is always said, Rene, and it happens here too, all politics is local, mm -hmm. and we have to be mindful of that. The voices out of Irwin Clay in the studio with me is Farai uh, Masai Sa. He is an attorney here in Trinidad and Tobago. Irwin, so let me have you both do a connection here. He's got a question for you. Hi, good good sure. morning, Mr. Clare. Okay, good morning, sir. Or could I refer to you by your first name? <laughs> Owen? <laughs> of course, of All right. course. Any friend of Rennie is mine. <laughs> All right. Yeah, o Owen, with re I, I take your point with regards to social media, because as you were speaking, I just put in um, Trinidad Immigration into Facebook on my, um, on my Samsung, right? And mm -hmm. all the articles that has been brought up are pertaining to the Jamaican stance on the issue. And, and I, I think that is where we, we in Trinidad, we fell down. Mm -hmm. um, there is nothing in terms of on social media. Because, yes, we see it in the papers. There's a small article I read in the papers on Friday where, the, where, the, where one of the, I think the minister in the ministry, who is also the minister of foreign affairs, he gave a small article in um, Guardian. Mm -hmm. But in terms of social media reaches so far, in the terms mm -hmm. of it, it reaches millions and millions of people, not just in Trinidad, mm -hmm. it, it will reach the, the, the persons who are speaking, the, the people, mm -hmm. the, uh, as uh, Owen would say, the, the weaklings. Mm -hmm. You know, we, yes. have to, we yes. have to reach out to them because at the end of the day, mm -hmm. it is these um, so-called figurative weaklings that are purchasing our project, pro ah, products. There you, you know, go. Um, so there you I, go. I think our, our, our government yeah. really needs to take heed because they would have come in the government in September last year on the back of a good social media campaign. Mm -hmm. So we need to yes. take it a, a step further. When there is when there are disputes between our CARICOM neighbors and we know that the knock-on effect can affect our, our way of doing business, our international trade and industry, um, we need to get onto social media and calm it. I, I tell you, the, the mm -hmm. first two pages on Facebook, I'm not seeing anything where any of our ministers or parliamentary secretaries or anyone mm -hmm. We, who mm -hmm. has um, the authority to speak on the topic has said, all right, this is the situation involving um, I, I, the, 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 the rejection of the 12 um, Jamaicans, mm -hmm. and this is what mm -hmm. we have found based on our investigations. But we welcome our Jamaican brothers and sisters uh, if they, so long as they meet the criteria to enter. And they, they can, just as how um, Rani has um, given the statistics, it's only 4% of persons have actually been denied. I think he was saying in 2010, 13,000 Jamaicans have been allowed entry. You know, so we, mm -hmm. we, we are pro- um, Jimmy, um, trade and industry, but we are not getting the message across, you know, to, to mm -hmm. our um, diaspora mm -hmm. and to our... Before Owen responds, let me just run over those numbers yes. again so we all clear. 2000, in 2010, 10,900 Jamaicans allowed. Of that number, we had a refusal rate of 3.3%. In 2011, 13,964 were allowed. We had a refusal rate of 4.2. In 2012, 15,871 were admitted. We had a refusal rate of 2.6% or 400 people. Mm -hmm. And, 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 and I, I think we need to yeah, reinforce it, 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 this all the time so folks understand that those detractors of the whole CARICOM initiative, like Mr. Mahoud of the private sector's organization, uh, continue to wear their mask because they really don't want to see this thing move away or because it's good, uh, good local politics, Irwin. Yeah, you see, you see, the point is this, is that, uh, again, uh, and there are those who, uh, it's not even the, the, the rejection rate, there are they're, they're spin-offs to that. Mm -hmm. Whether or not, whether or not the, 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 those who were so affected were treated in a, in a manner of speaking that has been agreed That's on, true, yes. he, he start having all these spin-offs. Then here mm -hmm. comes the guys with the trade situation. He start having a spin-off. Then here comes mm -hmm. the guy who have a music issue. That's saying that too much of our music is playing there. Here comes the spin-off. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, check this out. At the end of the day, organizations outside of Trinidad and Jamaica, I can speak here from the from the Caribbean diaspora. Do we have? Do we get it right here yet? No, we don't. But then we also find ways here that we work together in unity for the same cause. Because right here in America, we have an immigration issue. And do you think the United States cares whether it's Trinidad, Jamaica, or Barbados? Mm -hmm. No, you don't meet their standards. You're not coming in, and you're deported. That's, it. That's, it. That's a fact. So we have an issue here as well. To have this happening in our mind, in our backyard, it makes it, it, makes it kind of cynical. 
when advocates like ourselves are here fighting for immigration reform. Mm. And a guy looks back at me and says, but wait, you're doing the same thing to your people back home. Something is amiss. We gotta get we gotta get beyond this. And the, our musicians, mm-hmm. our musicians and our sports ambassadors mm-hmm. have established how we can get this done and they do it day in and day out. Why can't our leaders use this as a vehicle to us to augment what is really trans- what is really happening right now? You are the holder of the order of distinction from the government of Jamaica in the area of two things. One is Jamaica Bickle, which we'll go to in just a second. That is uh, the, the Athletic um, uh, f- uh, Foundation you have there to bring the region together. But you also have uh, I- I- enormous influence because of your years doing this. Uh, the, the, the diaspora, are they seeing this the way you are, or are you um, out there by yourself? Because, I mean, clearly, I, no, I, I, no. I know your reason. I just wonder if this is more yeah. widespread. And what we are feeling here coming out of Jamaica could just be a storm in a teacup, for instance, is my inquiry. Well, well, the, that, that's usually what, what brings on the real hurricane, a storm in a teacup, if it is not managed. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> too and, true. And, so, too true. And, and therein lies the, the crux of the matter. Mm-hmm. What I'm saying is this, is that the majority of us here in the DAS, we get together, we have a lot of Trinidadian friends here, Rene. Mm-hmm. This, this is not issues that divide us. We have differences of opinions, mm-hmm. but it doesn't cause it doesn't cause vitriol. We recognize that there's a difference, and we find ways to work it out. There are some situations that will leave bad taste in people's mouth. It doesn't mean I go around and poison the water. That's I right. Do not. That's right. I'm a church today, and in this church is a multiplicity of Caribbean nations. Are we? Are we also turn this into church? No, we're not. We're praising one God. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. When the music plays, we sing to the same hymn or dance to it. That's what I'm trying to say here, that, yes, you have a problem. But this tea in the teacup business here, if we don't watch it, it can get to, to greater proportions. And, and I, think, I think that the government of Jamaica, which I must say, when I look back at the history of them in opposition, were not necessarily keen on... Caricom. <laughs> but, however, I give them credit, I give the minister credit for her stepping up. We wait to see what happens there. But also leaders in Trinidad must also recognize it's important and don't believe that by not talking about it, it will go away. It's not going to. As a matter of fact, it only intensifies it. And I think that seeing our heads have to be drawn to the table now and realize that we are, we are plentiful in our littleness and collectively weak.